Welcome to another episode of Good To Go Creations. Um, today we'll be working on my 2001 Jeep Cherokee with a cracked cylinder head. Um, basically we're going to replace the cylinder head with a new one and do a head gasket job. So if you're doing either one of those, head gaskets or replace your cylinder head, this will show you how to do it. Let's get started. So this is a 4 liter AMC Jeep engine. Um, they tend to crack right around the middle. Uh, it's an 0331 casting is the ones that do it. It's, I believe, from 99 to 01. are very common for that problem. Um, so, we're going to replace it with a, an aftermarket unit that's a lot stronger than the factory one. And it should hold up for another 100,000 miles at least. Okay, before you start any sort of uh, work, they usually recommend you, you uh, disconnect the battery. So, take that off, and the first step to this job is taking off the radiator hoses in this piece here. Thermostat housing. Thermostat housing. Yeah. Well, these kind of hose clamps are kind of a pain sometimes. I've never been a big fan. there. Sometimes you gotta kind of twist these to get them to break loose. And then once they break loose... Oh, before you take these off, if your engine's got full of coolant, you might want to drain that out first. This is full of water, so we're not worried about it. <clears throat> then, so you take your thermostat housing off. See the bolts on this sucker on here. Figure out what size they are. Is that metric or standard? This one feels like a half inch fits it good. Hmm. Nope. We got a little oil in the cooling system here. It's from uh, where the head cracks, it mixes it. Next, I'm going to try to get this air cleaner assembly out of the way. So, what I'm going to start off doing while uh, Andrew works on the other side to get the air conditioning pump bracket off, because that's attached to the cylinder head. Basically, we just got to get everything unhooked from the cylinder head. So I'm going to start over here. I'm going to, you know, take off this brake booster hose, whatever. So the PVC valve and it's everything here. Throttle linkage. All this stuff needs to come off because we got to pull this intake off and the exhaust manifold off in order to get the cylinder head off. Which that's probably going to be the biggest the biggest task here is getting it, just all the crap off the cylinder head. The only thing I know is the cylinder head won't be too bad, but it's really heavy. The thing weighs like 80 pounds, you said, right? 85. 85 pound cylinder head. I'm in the process of unplugging all these connectors. If you want, it might be a good idea to label all these. Uh, like with some masking tape right down on there, like this one plugs into... Map sensor. So it plugs into this temperature sensor here. You might want to label them. But if you don't label them, like I'm about to not label them. Because they typically only plug into one spot. And the wiring harness, all the wires kind of want to line up to where they go anyway. Like obviously, you're not going to be able to plug this temperature sensor one into this and get it screwed up and not fit. They all just plug into where they go. They're all different shapes and sizes. But I've done that before with other projects just to make it simpler to hook everything back up. Right? Yes sir. You ever done it before? I haven't and I end up buying a whole other car so I know where they went. <laughs> so we're gonna take the uh, fuel line off. Uh, to do that use one of these quick disconnect tools. Usually they're, they're dirt cheap at the parts store. 
you know, two different sizes, uh, figure out what size fits what you're doing. And you just put it around the, the line, and you just shove it in, and then you can pop the other line off. So that's piece of cake like so be very careful not to damage this hose it is expensive uh, this yeah. line so uh yeah don't kink it don't kink it Andrew you're on that side of the engine apparently it's a ninety dollar part in the process of removing the coil pack over here what held that on there hmm huh? Oh, four bolts. It's like a coil. It's almost like a, that's a coil on plug, isn't it? Yes, it is. So you remove the four bol bolts out of the cylinder head and pop them off. Yes, you are. And then there's a electrical connector back here. In the There's your coil packs. So the trick with these is there's little holes in this pulley that you can go through to get to the bolt. First you gotta take the electric fan out. I tried doing it with it in it and it just you had no room to get in there. So take that fan out, just two bolts, one here, one over here, and uh, unplug it, it just pulls right out the bottom. And then up here you just go in between. And you just go in and out of these little bolt holes. There's three that hold this on. And then there's one down here. So Let's see which one I haven't broken loose yet. And now they're all broken loose. Let's take them all out and set the power steering over here in the corner. go. It slides out from there. There's it sit over in this corner right here. Duh. Stand it up so nothing leaks out of the top. It's all good. Make sure you don't kink any of these too much. And you see we're starting to uh, we're starting to be able to see some of the engine now. We'll get some of the junk out of the way. Okay so I got you got to pull all the bolts out of these holes here. There's quite a few of them, as you can see. One, two, three, four, five. Goes back front. You get all those out. There's some tricky ones in the back there. Then you pull this off. Pull this out. Wherever it comes out at. There we go. And then you should be able to get this off. Chocolate milk. The kid got some chocolate over his face. Yuck. Yeah, there's straight water. Put it on right here. It's a good example right there of the oil mixed with the water. You can see. You see all that water in there. Good. No bueno. So, next step is we got to pull these off right here. All these got to come off, and it wants us to pull these push rods out right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some holes in the box and keep all these in order. So I popped holes in this cord cardboard box here. This is where I'm going to stick the lifters in like that. Lifters? I thought we were doing push rods. Whatever. Push rods. Got 12 of them for 12. Keep them in order. 
and keep these in order too if I can. Okay, so I gotta do these first ones here. All you gotta do is there's a nut right here in the middle. Just back these off all the way. These here got like a connecting bracket, so I guess I'll have to take off two at a time. Pulled up. I'll slide right out of there. <laughs> Just don't. Okay, one. This is the first one. Tighten. Where's my box? I don't know. Where have you left it last? So here's my box. Front of engine. It goes there. Be uh, here's a, an issue though. What? Be careful these don't fall through and you drop them on the ground. Because you're going to scuff them up. Two. These are pretty hefty push rods. That's pretty honestly. long. That's like a piece of something I could leave these on the ground with. Okay, so we got all the uh, push rods out. We got them all in our box here, all in order. And Andrew's just trying to unplug all the fuel injectors. Pulling these uh, upper intake slash exhaust manifold bolts off. Soaked them in oil and they're coming off, luckily. This is where these ratcheting in wrenches come into play because you can't really get a regular ratchet and socket on there. So after removing all those bolts, we managed to get them all off without breaking any. We got one more. Here's the intake. Intake's off. Here's what we got left. There's one more bolt at the very back. Right back down here. And then that'll come off too. That's a cool design. Yes, two two sensors. Two kilo converters. Yuck. Now we're checking out these head bolts. You're gonna need a 12 point socket for these. Point socket. Get some up in here. And I got the rest of them right down in there. All the way along. The last step of removal. Oh, loose one, huh? Recommend using a half inch drive if you got one. It's 12 point sockets. So. 12 point sockets. We actually uh, busted one of our Plus in my one of my three inch drives on this. Uh, this is something I believe when we get to put it back on, this last head bolt is not come out. It won't clear, so we gotta put the new one back in the head before we put the head on. This hits this little okay, ridge here. Ridge on the firewall. Yeah. So the very back head bolt and the summer head, leave it in there and then put the one in when you put it back on. Yep, I watched a guy do it and he uh wraps around here to hold it in the air so it makes it easier to put it in. We'll see what we do when we get it out. And you're talking about this one. Yeah. Right back in here. So if you're planning on reusing your cylinder if you're just doing a head gasket swap. It shouldn't be in this iron. Look up the procedure for the cylinder head removal. There might be a uh, what do you call it? bolt pattern for taking it off as well as putting definitely be one for putting it back on but there's might be one for taking it off too. I didn't see one in the guy that we had but if it was aluminum we probably would. Yeah. Oh. 